Josh Allen has a new deal. Not the quarterback who probably should get a deal to replace his $43 million per year contract, but the defensive end who was not happy with the Jaguars for dragging their feet and applying the franchise tag after he had 17 and a half sacks last season, a franchise record. He has been an incredible player for the Jaguars. They take care of one of their own. Reportedly, it's a five-year extension, and this can get confusing at times because the language matters. Is it a five-year contract or is it a five-year extension of the one-year franchise tag? Is it a six-year contract? How much is fully guaranteed at signing? We won't know that until the deal comes out because now is the moment for the folks who are scurrying to be first in the thumb race to, to X to say it's a $150 million contract with $88 million guaranteed. That doesn't tell us when the Jaguars can step aside, how much is fully guaranteed at signing, how much becomes fully guaranteed after one year, which they practically can't get away from. We'll get the full breakdown when the deal comes out. But it was clearly enough to get Josh Allen to take it at a time when it felt like the Jaguars were content to let maybe the 2024 season ride out with Allen under the franchise tag. Yeah, that's right. I mean, by all due accounts, we know how this goes. It says five years. It's it's basically probably means there's a three-year deal that they can get out of uh, the last two years, right? We'll see where it goes. But, hey, a necessity. I think that's the big thing. Good for the Jaguars getting it done. I mean, we talk about it, like uh, Josh Allen embodies all the things that you would want, you know, as far as, hey, we draft him in the top ten. Hey, he's an awesome awesome person right anybody that's been around Josh Allen it's positive vibes and it's like he's happy to be at football and be that guy right so he embodies what you would want in your locker room let alone you picked him and we know right like last year there was a reason they were in the market for trading for edge guys or even signing edge guys and in, in prior to the 2023 season they're worried about their pass rush That's an issue. The trade deadline, they were flirting with people about, you know, trading for a pass rusher there. Trayvon Walker has not worked out to the extent of being the number one pick to this point. Josh Allen is that guy up front that you got to worry about. So, you know, good for him, good for them. I think it's smart, and uh, he's a damn good football player. And look, there were nine guys, nine. Yeah. Who were tagged this year. Eight franchise, one transition tag. Seven of the nine have signed long-term deals. And the deadline for doing the long-term deal is still more than three months away. So much for it being a deadline-driven business. But you know what? It could be that the teams and the agents decided, hey, look, we're going to do this anyway on July 15th. Let's just do it now. Excuse me. So the guy's there for... (laughs) God bless you. So the guy's there for the off-season program. Because look at what happens. If he stays away from the full off-season, we do the deal... On July 15, he's missed the offseason program. He's behind and we're behind. So let's just pretend it's July 15 and let's just do this deal now. It's in our interest. It's in your interest. And kudos to the – now, look, on, on some of these, I look at them though and I say, like, maybe you should have just done the franchise tag. That's one of the reasons why we're getting the deals done. The, as I said when Jalen Johnson did his deal, the, the offer is not going to be worse on July 15. It's only going to be better. Why are you not waiting? Why are you not depriving the team of services to get them to give you more money? So I I don't know whether or not these are great deals from the player's standpoint. The bottom line is the deals are getting done. And with Josh Allen's, we'll get the full details. It looks like a good deal. We'll see what it is. But it gets him in there for the offseason program, along with six other guys who were tagged. Yeah, that's the big thing. Let alone, I think it lets a team... Wait, like, you know, like you talked about a Dallas, they're getting out in front of it. They're just going to, hey, let's get it done. Let's account for it now. We got the draft. We got players. Wait, if we wanted to trade up and, you know, maybe get another pick in the first round, ooh, maybe we now have a little room because of how we did the Josh Allen thing or even free agents after. Right, they'll be now more of a player because they're going to go. Wait, we know what we are with Josh Allen. Wait, well, if they didn't, it'd be to your point. Wait, Josh still doesn't have a contract. He's asking for this. Right, we can't sign this player because we're still worried about Josh Allen and figuring out that deal. You know, I I think it's the smart thing to go here. Yeah. Now, the player to your point there of like, yeah, does he squeeze every last dollar out of them? Probably not. But at the same time, by doing that, he's risking being on a one-year deal and he's getting hurt and not getting that deal. So he took the longevity and the security instead of squeezing them, and I'm, I'm never going to fault him for that.
It is a five-year contract, not five-year extension. Okay. Had the franchise tag available. So the whole thing is going to be scrutinized by, okay, he, you know, he had the one-year deal in hand for whatever the franchise tag was. So it's a, is it four years with new money? They're going to play games potentially to try to bump it up. We'll get the full breakdown and we'll explain what it is. And it probably is two years fully guaranteed, I would guess. Two years fully guaranteed. A third year that may have some Practical partial guarantee somewhere. that yeah, becomes right. vested later. Right. And then right. the last two years are team option. They're not meaningless unless they're filled up. Like if if they put a bunch of that back end bull crap in there, like the Tyreek Hill deal or the Devontae Adams deal, then yeah, the team isn't going to honor it. It's possible that you've got favorable years to the team on the back end, like the Jalen Johnson contract, the Matabuke contract front loaded to give the player more cash. Now on the back end, reasonable numbers for the team. So, you know, you may, if you're the player wish they were going to tear it up, but the numbers are actually good. We'll keep them around. So that's going to be the key too. Are the years four and five real or are they Fugazi aimed at bumping up the average? That's why it's always important to wait for the details and not come to any broad conclusions about these numbers that get thrown out there without context because five years, 150 million does not mean anything without knowing how it's structured, how it's paid, and when the Jaguars can say, see you later to Josh Allen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's right. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, by by all due guesstimations to what you're saying, what we've seen, our experience in this, yeah, it's probably somewhere realistically three years, 85 million, really, or something, maybe 88 or 90, something in that range. Uh, but, but, yeah, we'll see, and we'll unpack those details tomorrow. But cool. It's cool to see, you know – it, 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 a changing here. I don't remember this many franchise guys getting long-term contracts, right? Nope. This is rare. And, you know, this free agent year of we saw so many one- and three-year deals, right? I think we've seen a ton of that. Uh, I think it's, it's encouraging this new approach. And then the not backloaded contract, too, right, as, as far as why are teams doing that as much. I mean, I think that's that's – you know, something different we've seen, too, as well here this year. There's there's a little bit of a changing of philosophy in the NFL and how they're spending money and doing these contracts. And, look, the goal for the player, if you can do it, get the first two years fully guaranteed and get what you would have gotten under the tag the first two years fully guaranteed. It takes away the risk that you're going to have a serious injury yeah. or you're just going right. to lose your – your fastball to the point where they don't tag you the second time and then your SOL. So you're trading in, and that's what it always is. I, mean, I remember saying this with Dak Prescott when the Cowboys weren't able to get him signed. You're trading in your right to play one year under the tag and force them to give you a 20% raise in year two, 44% raise in year three. You're trading that in for the long-term deal. So what gets me to give up the bird in the hand? It can't just be a push. I need a little bit more. I need something. That that's look, when Kirk Cousins was playing in Washington and his franchise tag was it went from 20 million to 24 million and they were offering him 16 million a year. Well, on a long-term deal, well, of course I'm not going to take that. Yeah, right. I'll just take 20 this year right. and I'll take 24 next year. <laughs> right. Screw your 16 million per year offer. That that set the table for him to leave. So that that power is out there. And look, we haven't seen anyone do it since him there was also a defensive back for the rams trumaine johnson yeah who did the same thing the same year he was tagged twice he went to the jets and got a big contract never lived up to it but he got the big contract and i i you know some of these players the farther you are away from the ball the better chance you have to pull this off one year of the tag two years of the tag and then become a free agent because nobody's going to tag you that third time. They're just not going to do it. And uh, maybe that's what T. Higgins does with the Bengals. I don't know. Uh, or maybe it's one year of the tag, and then he walks away next year. But he and Antoine Winfield Jr. are the two that are left. We'll push it right up to July 15 and see if it happens, Chris. My guess would be it doesn't happen for Higgins, and it does happen for Winfield. That would be mine as well, right? I would, would agree. You know, there, There's more at play there in Cincinnati, the receiver position, Jamar Chase, all of that. Right, yeah, Antoine Winfield. Uh, I it it feels from anybody you talk to down there, he's a part of the long term plan of the Bucks. They love him. 
he embodies the DNA of what they want there from Todd Bowles and Jason Light on the football team. Intense, brings it, detailed, true professional like you'd expect being the son of an ex-player. Uh, yeah, I think I'm with you there. It gets A long term gets done uh, for Antoine Winfield. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.